Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, looking at all the lines this weekend, uh, and people know this weekend I like Pauli Malinaji over Zab Judah, but I'll hedge it with Judah by knockout. I'm going to take an even greater chance, right? Now, keep in mind, it's my philosophy that if you get all the fights right, you're not trying hard enough. In other words, gambling involves risks. You really need to push yourself to try to get big returns, right? That means that occasionally a fight is going to blow up. Occasionally you are going to have to swim against the tide. Let's talk about this super middleweight championship fight. I have to tell you, I don't have the slightest idea why the reigning champion, Saki Obika, is the underdog in the fight. Nor do I understand why the casino is giving you plus 175 odds. That seems ridiculous to me. <laughs> okay. Bika is a guy, by the way, who fought Lucien Butte, who went the distance with Andre Ward, who just fought a very underrated Marco Parabin. Right? There's no comparison. I mean, simply, there is no comparison between who Bika has fought and who Anthony Durrell has fought. And understand, too, this is not Andre Durrell. This is Anthony Durrell. Let me point out, too, Bika does have a problem with guys who know how to box. Lucien Butte, right? Joe Calzaghe. By the way, that's the level of fighter Bika's been fighting, right? Andre Ward. Bika does have a problem with slick boxer types. But Anthony Durrell is a knockout puncher, right? He has a greater than 80% knockout ratio. He's not in there to be slick. Also, let me say this too. When you're a guy with a big punch, those are the skills you spend your time developing. You don't really spend your time getting the kind of slickness that an Andre Ward has. So, I consider this my bet of the weekend. The play I'm recommending here is Bika, the underdog, at plus 175. We're swimming against the tide. Hedged with Durrell by KO. Right? Keep in mind, even if you're getting Terrible odds on the Durrell side of the play, right? And keep in mind, it's Durrell by KO. So even if you're getting close to even money odds on the Durrell side of the play, because you're getting a plus 175 on the Bika side of the play, and keep in mind, Bika himself has a knockout punch. You remember the Mendy fight, right? Don't look at the official decision. Look at the fight itself, right? Right? You're getting a plus 70, a plus 175 on the Bika side. So you should be able to hedge the play. So that if Durrell gets the knockout, which apparently the casinos expect, you're covered. But if Bika defends his title, and understand this guy's been swimming in much deeper water than Anthony Durrell, then you get a nice little profit on the play. Were I the odds maker on this, quite frankly, I view this fight as 55-45 for Bika. I thought Bika would be a slight favorite, not a plus 175 underdog. I view this as a casino mispricing. To the gamblers out there, I say give this a hard look. Bika is a mid-range hooker. Durrell is a very heavy-handed guy trying to set up a right hand, right? My point to you is simply... I'm not sure if Anthony Durrell has the boxing skills to keep Bika off of him if Bika gets on a roll. Why Bika would be a plus 175 when this guy has literally done it the hard way 
right? Calzaghe, Andre Ward, <laughs> right? Parabin, Mendy, you know, Boutte, right? When, when Bika is climbing the Mount Everest of his division and he gets a belt, how could the odds makers make him a plus 175 underdog when he's not exactly fighting Andre Ward in this fight? I like Bika to win, the underdog, hedged with the favorite Durrell by KO. To the gamblers, I say, give this one a look. Thanks for stopping by.